Old School RuneScape. It's a game that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. I uh, first played the game with my brothers nearly 20 years ago. I moved on some years later after that uh, to other MMOs. These games always have a way of finding their way back to you. Gilnor, which is the world of RuneScape, is actually packed to the brim with your usual RPG fare. Uh, different monsters to fight and gear to upgrade and some genuinely funny and cleverly written quests that millions of people <laughs> furiously spam their spacebar through for uh, all that sweet, sweet dopamine. Somewhere that I believe Old Soul RuneScape succeeded, where many of its old competition, and especially its more modern contemporaries, abjectly fail at, is in the department of evergreen content. A fire cape in 2021 to some is a lot less impressive than it was in 2005, but it's no less important of an upgrade nowadays, even with the infernal cape directly outclassing it as the best in slot melee cape. The average mid to end game player will be using a fire cape for the vast majority of their account's progression. The wealth of evergreen content in RuneScape is st <laughs> staggering, and sometimes it can be downright intimidating. There's so many things that you could do, like scaling, PVM, PvP, minigames, uh, just messing around with your friends, or things that people tell you that you have to do, that you should do, like your Nightmare Zone imbues, your quests, your Zora, Theater of Blood, Theater of Blood, there's also Theater of Blood. Hey, have you heard of Theater of Blood? Uh, I don't know, it's this really cool thing called Theater of Blood. Uh, or your permanent account upgrades, like your Barrow's Gloves, your Fire Capes, your Fighter Torso, your Diaries. There's money making to do with Zora, Vorkath, or Corrupted Gauntlet. Uh, stuff that you should set up as soon as possible so you can reap the rewards down the road, like Kingdom of Miscellanea. You gotta get that going so you can collect your logs and your coal every couple months. You gotta get your herbs. If you're an Iron Man, you really want your herbs. You really want those logs, because you gotta do Winter Tot. You gotta do that first, though, because if you don't do Winter Tot first, it's gonna suck later and you gotta get your graceful and it's really just hard to just cut through all the noise and just I find great difficulty in getting shit off the ground nowadays uh, and even more in closing out projects there's so much to get sidetracked by with what I've already said, let alone what I have in, in relation to the outside world and my own head, uh, that I've decided to work on a project that doesn't allow myself to get sidetracked, and yet at the same time has a deterministic and very real end. I plan to max out and fill up my house with as much gear and pets as I can get my hands on, and to fill out as much of the collection log as I can but there's two catches, two caveats. I have compiled a list of just about every collection log entry and notable account milestone and arranged them alphabetically by the first letter in their name or their drops name with enough wiggle room to keep it interesting. This is fucking annoying. I like this. This is cute. The episodes of this series were produced chronologically and in alphabetical order, so that a meaningful account upgrade or piece of content is acquired or tackled each episode, corresponding with the letter of the week. For example, if we're on episode H or episode 8, we could do Herbivore, we could do Hard Clues, get the Hobgoblin Champion Scroll, maybe I've done Sins of the Father by then, I could do some Hallowed Sepulchre. All that matters is that I meaningfully progress my account in some tangible way, which will be made a little bit more difficult by the second criteria. We are going to be an ultimate Iron Man, meaning we cannot trade players, we don't have a bank, and unlike every other account in RuneScape, uh, when you die, every single item, including your untradeables, is dropped to the ground for one hour on that world. If you are in an instance, it goes outside that instance. If you do not get back to that spot and pick up your items within one hour, those items vanish forever. 
The concept of permanence is scarce on an Ultimate Iron Man, with the only truly permanent rewards being your insured pets, your stats, the slots in your collection log, and a bevy of quest and diary rewards that range from niche to worthless to invaluable best in slot pieces. That's about it. <laughs> It's a lot of things, but it's a lot less than you would think. We're gonna have to travel light and get creative and stay focused. All right, so first order of business is to actually create our character. So we're gonna need a name. Uh, I think I've come up with a good one. Just gotta see if it's free. Uh, nice. And then we've gotta make our character actually like look cool. There he is! <laughs> he kind of looks like uh, the guy from Total Drama Island, the camp counselor. <laughs> All right, campers, today's challenge is to bring me your mom's credit card. So something I actually haven't done in a while is uh, mess about on a free-to-play account. And so instead of diving headfirst into all the members content I've got to do, and there's plenty, I thought I'd go ahead and knock out a bunch of the free-to-play quests. Actually most of these quests are uh, 20 years old, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, so they'll be a little on the basic side, but I'm sure the nostalgia will keep me entertained. He looks delicious with his big red cheeks, but we've all got an agreement that we're not going to eat stew, right? Right. The guys upstairs, they, they love it. Stealth is a vital part of Metal Gear Online for all players. I kept you waiting, huh? What would you say your trademark is if you have one? Well, I guess the look I'm best known for is blue steel. What's that look like? It's impressive. Give me the boy, you. dead that makes for 17 quests complete where a total of 35 quest points which isn't a bad start for my stint in free to play go ahead and pause if you want the full list we'll get back to the last few quests when they're a little bit more relevant or quicker to complete right now i'm just buying a few items to make my final preparations before i bond up and go to a member's world got a few levels from those quests but we've still got about five more quests left to do today i know and we're, we're still not done uh so why don't we go ahead and just jump right into that all right we're finally in a uh, member's world the free-to-play experience is pretty timeless but now it's time for the real game to begin we got a hell of a lot more skills to work with and infinitely more content to do with those skills 
Uh, you'll see right over here is our good friend Purdue. As long as we're on a PvP or Bounty Hunter world, we can find this guy at uh, most of the spawn points in the game. And he'll sell us back a selection of our untradeables for a nominal fee, once we've unlocked them, of course. So we're talking about like our ectophiles, our diary gear, bear heads, whatnot. Bunch of useful stuff. But he's got nothing for us right now, so... Get the bug out of here. Uh, we're going to be spending the rest of the day in and around Artie, so I may as well get as much silk as I can carry for a little bit of extra GP. Side note, this uh, man in Alcarit doesn't have a talk option, so if you have turn your NPC attack options off, you can left-click pickpocket them for some easy thieving XP. What are you selling? Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. Alright, got Monk's Fred done for some early woodcutting levels. Now it's time to throw a fucking rager. <laughs> um, it's 13 woodcutting. Uh, so I'm gonna chop some trees. And this log right here is going to be 18 woodcutting and 15 fire making. So now I can move on to oak trees, which is a lot more AFK. There we go. That's 30 fire making. And that's all I need to do from here. I don't really need uh, the woodcutting level right now for anything. Fun fact, these items actually from a maze random. I didn't record it because I didn't feel like this loot was going to be really necessary to have. Uh, but apparently my inventory was full when I got it. So the stuff just dropped on the ground and I thought it would have despawned in a couple minutes. But it's been there for about an hour <laughs> if I look at this time down here. Uh, so I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> I don't know, I'll just sell this stuff. It's not really a lot of money. I also got a bird's nest. Ooh, incredibly important quest for me. Uh, sea slug done gets you, what was it again? 24 fishing almost immediately. And I'll just go get the stuff I need for fishing contests at this shop right over here. Not wasting any time. Here's fishing contests for 26 fishing. Uh, we gotta do the rest of it manually. Okay, got myself a whole inventory of trout. I don't quite have the level to cook them yet. Thankfully, Barnacle Boy over here will sell me some sardines so I can bump that level up a bit. I only need 15 to cook trout, but I'll go ahead and get 25 so I can cook some salmon too. Because I'm going to get a lot of both on this grind. That's prep done, got 25 cooking. Go ahead and finish up this inventory because it's some pretty cheap XP. There's the big 30. And 250 total on the account. And that's a uh, first big milestone, I guess. Oh, there's 35 fishing. Uh, it felt a lot longer than it actually was. It was really only about an hour, but now I'm done with this. As you can see, you probably got an idea of what we're going to do for our first goal now. But we still got two quests left, and I'm really not looking forward to one of them. There are too many of them. What are we going to do? I always feel bad for the sheep in this quest. Uh, just, yeah, I know, I know, just... Give me your fucking money! <coughs> Um, my recording messed up, but I finished history quiz for a cheeky nine hunter and slayer. Uh, it's pretty good to do. Just takes a minute. Now we're just gonna knock out the mini quest for daddy's home, which is honestly a godsend for early game construction. All you've got to do is fuck up this old dude's house and replace his broken down shitty furniture with slightly less shitty furniture. And use way too many fucking nails in the process. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> dude, no. Don't do this to me. Are you fucking serious, dude? I bought 50! It recommends 14! Oh my fucking 
god. Alright, we got that over with. Uh, and the best part about Daddy's Home is it gets you a free house. So saves me about a thousand gold. And the supplies in this crate should be enough to get me to around 20 construction. Which is the point I want to get to by the end of this episode. So, should be able to just go and bang out a few contracts, I think. From with Mahogany Homes. And yeah. Uh, got my contract done. Guess I got this uh, beginner casket I can open. Outstanding. Alright, just gonna run through Tower of Life real quick for some quick con XP. Uh, give me close to 20. I can use the rest of the planks in my bag to get the rest of the way there. Help me! Thank you! Nice. Got a few levels, like 11 crafting, 8 thieving, and 16 construction. Almost to 20. Uh, just gotta go get the rest of the way there. Okay, got pretty close to 20 construction. This should get me to 19. Nice, nice. Just go ahead and put a rug here. Uh, I don't really quite have enough XP to get to 20 in my bag. So I'll just go ahead and work on Hunter now instead, and I'll come back to this once I'm done with that. God, I forgot how much early game Hunter sucked, but I can't be bothered to do Fossil Island right now. Thankfully, this should be 15 Hunter right here. Uh, so now I can catch Ruby Harvests while I'm waiting for the birds to land on my snares. Should be a lot more XP per hour. Coming in with 25 Hunter, not too bad. We'll get over here. Alright, one more level to go here. Uh, just one more butterfly. I lost my bird snares at some point, but it doesn't matter anymore. There's 31. Go trap some Lerupias for the last uh, last few levels. I think that'll be fun. To catch Lerupias, all you need to do is make a spike trap in one of these holes over here with a batch of logs. Give one of them a quick jab. What? Then bait it into jumping over the pit, and it's that easy. Wow. Thirty-two hunter and a passive prayer level two. Now I'm twelve. All right, this is it. This should be the last Lerupia. Uh, Thirty-three hunter. Nice. Now we can go do what I actually came here to do. And the whole reason I was training Hunter was so that I could catch a barb tail Kebit. Their tails can actually be equipped in the main hand as a wieldable harpoon, which will save us an inventory space at our first activity. It also turns out I'm just kind of stupid, and I definitely had enough XP to get to 20 construction, so... It sounds like we're done. If you've made it this far, then I just want to take a second to say thanks for watching. It really means a lot to me. We're just getting started, so I hope to see you next week. Because we've got a boat to catch.